They revolutionized Music World when they hit the market in 1965. I'm talking about the Moog synthesizer. Not Moog, which I found out. Now, where would Emerson Lake and Palmer, Parliament of P-Funk, have been without this groundbreaking instrument? I'm very honored to welcome its inventor, Dr. Robert Moog, to the screensavers. Welcome, Dr. Moog. Hey, glad to be here, Patrick. This is amazing. We, okay, you're kind of, are, are you the father of the synthesizer? No, there have been a lot of us. It's, it was a group effort. <laughs> what, uh, what exactly would you, if you were going to, if somebody sat you down and said, what is a synthesizer, what, what would the answer be? Well, to synthesize is to put together something complete out of its component parts. Mm -hmm. That's what a synthesizer does. It, it, it's like a, like a bag of parts that you put together to make a complete sound. Very cool. Now, when it first, the, first you started first working on the design in, in 64. Where yeah. did that come from? From a, a, an experimental composer who wanted to make new sounds electronically. And he told me the kind of sounds he wanted to make, and it sounded really interesting to do. Did this start out? Did you, you know, did you sort of like break out a box with a keyboard that they were able to play, or, or what was the, what did the first synthesizers look like? There were, there were individual modules. Mm -hmm. uh, the first things uh, we built together uh, were a voltage-controlled oscillator That'll and, get a, your attention. and a voltage-controlled amplifier. An oscillator makes a musical tone, an amplifier shapes it. Having a voltage control means you could use one to shape the other, so you could get very complex sounds. Very neat. Then you weren't actually trying to, to emulate real instruments at that no. point. No. No, in fact, just the opposite. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make completely new sounds, sounds that nobody had ever heard before. Were you using keyboards at that point, or was that a no-no also? <laughs> uh, we did eventually try a keyboard out, but that was just one way of controlling the sounds. Mm -hmm. The composers who were experimenting with electronics at that time mm -hmm. wanted to make just new sounds and build music up out of these new sounds. Very cool. We actually have, we've showed a picture just a second ago of one of the early ones. Yeah. We, where I was actually talking to you just a minute ago, if you were talking about individual modules, like the modulation buses or oscillators. Mm -hmm. these, these would have been a separate box stacked up back in the day. There would have been a panel about this big. Mm -hmm. And behind that, there would, there would have been, you know, a book, a, a fat book size of circuitry. Very cool. Now, we actually have a, a mini Moog here. Could you play something on it for us? Yeah, this, is, uh, this happens to be our anniversary edition mini Moog Voyager. The 50th, 50th anniversary? 50th anniversary edition. Yes, sir. We've been doing this for, for 50 years. <clears throat> So what I'll play here are, mm -hmm. are, are some of the different sounds that are stored in a, in a digital memory. Now, the sounds are made by analog circuitry, but the, uh, the storage of all these settings is digital. Very cool. <laughs> Speaking of P-Funk. So what are the advantages of the Mini Moog? We actually, I guess we can pull the, the, the back of the case down. Okay. You guys have shrunk this down, because back in the yeah. day, these, these, the full-size Moog were like a six, seven-foot stack of units. Yeah, now nobody try this at home now. <laughs> <laughs> this will violate your warranty. Yeah, it sure will. Uh, <laughs> but this is the analog circuitry here. Mm -hmm. On this one board with 800 parts, all the, all, there are all the circuits that make and shape and... Uh, uh, mix together the, the sounds. Mm -hmm. This board here is a separate little microcomputer that controls uh, the, the, the digital memory that remembers the panel settings. Very nice. So I don't actually have to change each knob every time I want to shift any That's of right. the sounds. You know, a circuit board like this mm -hmm. is made with the latest technology, and these lines are very, very thin. They didn't have stuff like that 20 or 30 years ago, and that's how we can get all this stuff mm -hmm. into one instrument like this. That's pretty amazing. So you actually started out, your first love of, of or I should say the birthplace of both electronic music yeah. and your, your role in it was actually theremins. This That's actually right. we have a kit which uh, Moog Music actually sells. Yeah, we've been, this has been very successful with us. Thousands of people have, have built uh, just this model of kit. And it includes a nice wood cabinet, it includes a circuit board that's all assembled and tested. Uh, the antennas, and then you put together yourself uh, the, the, the panel and you do the wiring from the panel to the rest of it. When you get all done, you have something that's uh, electrically and, and mechanically pretty much like our EtherWave theremin. And that was actually, I guess, a, it was a Russian invention originally, Dr. Theremin, is that right? That's right. Uh, Leon Theremin was a Russian physicist, mm -hmm. and he, he, he invented this in 1920. That's early. Yeah. That's, that's very early. One you... of the very earliest. 
Now, I guess it's pitch and volume are controlled by the two. Would you call them antennas? Yes. What do you call they them? They are antennas, okay. yes. This is the pitch antenna. Mm -hmm. The closer I get my hand to it, the higher the pitch goes. Mm -hmm. And uh, my left hand now is controlling the volume. The more I get my hand away, the louder the sound will get. And when I play it, I, I produce small pitch changes with my fingers, larger ones with my hand, Wow! and a vibrato just by shaking my wrist. And the rest is practice. A lot of practice. Actually, <laughs> we have a virtuoso. Is yeah. it a thereminist? Is that how we say that? A virtuoso thereminist, Robbie Virus, who, who uh, plays in, in San Francisco. Very cool. It's unbelievable. Robbie, can we hear a little something? Robbie plays with Project Commenta. <laughs> Going here in San Francisco, you can actually get more of Robbie's music. If you want to learn more, projectcomento.com to find out when they're playing, how to get music, and how to hear what they're doing. Were you surprised that, I mean, analogs come back, you know? It's, 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 you obviously take advantage of digital technology to make it easier to create analog sounds. But people are, they're using older synthesizers. Was this a surprise, or? It wasn't a surprise to me. I've always liked analog. What was a big surprise for me was that in the early 80s, when digital synthesizers mm -hmm. came in, uh, musicians' attention was diverted away from analog and to digital. And for sure, digital synthesizers have lots of wonderful features. They have a lot of sounds built in and, and uh, all these functions you can mm -hmm. program up by pressing buttons and so on. But uh, analog uh, has a unique high-quality sound. Mm -hmm. And when you play it, how can I say it? It's just fun to play. It just feels good. It's a little different. The, the, there's there's a, a connection between the player and the instrument which goes beyond something that can be explained with, with uh, physical theories. It's in the spiritual world. I like it. What comes? What, what's next, Dr. Moog? What, what are you working on now these days? Or? Well, uh, we're, we're always designing new products. All mm -hmm. the products we design are for people who play live. Mm -hmm. That's our specialty. They happen to be all analog, but uh, we, we use digital wherever it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, they all sound good. They all have uh, enduring musical values. And they're part and of a long tradition. <laughs> they're, they're part of a long, a long tradition. And, and they feel good to play. And uh, when you listen to them, they feel good to listen to, too. Dr. to Moe. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to check out MoogMusic.com to find more about these instruments and where you can purchase them yourself. And if you want to see the complete collection of Bob's instruments, Dr. Gee whiz, I can't speak today, folks. Moog Music is where you're going to find all the instruments you saw today and to learn more about them. And for a review of the Theremin kit, we actually built one. Our very own web producer and musical maverick, Tim Moynihan, has all the words for you up at thescreensavers.com.